Hello and welcome to day three of our Holy Week journey with Jesus. Today's Bible passage is John chapter 12, starting at verse 20. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. And then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who would love their life, lose it. And those who hate their life in this world, keep it for eternal life. Today I want to start with the simple observation that there are always people wanting to see Jesus and to follow him. Today is the same as always. He will always be an intensely attractive figure. And our role as disciples of Jesus, like Philip and Andrew, is to bring people to him. And I wonder today, who might you be bringing to Jesus, those who are seeking him, today, this week? Give some time to ponder that. Then I also want us to focus on Jesus' words about the seed dying and being buried and then springing up in fresh life as it germinates and grows. Clearly Jesus is predicting all that's about to happen to him. All throughout his life, Jesus knew that his mission, his purpose, his whole incarnation would end in a cross and a grave and then the bursting forth of a new resurrection life. And it's a pattern of life that Jesus clearly calls us to follow. We're not to grasp so firmly onto our own lives, our own safety and comfort at the expense of all else. No, we are to hold these things lightly so that we might be available to Jesus and not hindered in that by our own self-preservation instincts. The more we give up for his sake, the more ultimately we will gain. And ultimately that is eternal life if we're willing to give everything to his control and to lay down our very lives. Life in all its fullness awaits. This last year has focused our hearts and minds very much on our mortality. As I record today, it's the day we're marking the anniversary of the start of the first lockdown in England, a day of sombre reflection. And I wonder, does it really matter whether you or I catch the coronavirus and were to perish? Because if our lives are given over to Jesus, if we're willing like him to be planted like a seed, then staying alive at all costs should not be our primary concern. After all, we have eternal life. The life we live in this earth is temporary. It's always going to end at some point. Now, of course, I'm not advocating a lack of appropriate caution and common sense with regard to the pandemic. And God, I expect, is not calling you literally today to lay down your life because there will be others who need you present so that you can love them and serve them and perhaps most importantly, communicate the wonderful good news of Jesus. But he does call you and me to see our earthly lives with a different perspective from the rest of society. Our lives are totally given over, or should be, to living, serving, and if need be, suffering and dying for the sake of Jesus and his purposes. A final thought. These words of Jesus remind me that uh, this is a time for taking seeds and planting them. And I have my own sunflower seed here, which I'm going to be planting to see and to hope to get some new growth and new plants and new seeds in due course. Over this past year, my hope and prayer is that you have invested into things that last forever, into the kingdom of God, that you've planted some new initiatives as church and as individuals. 
may be through getting to know your neighbours better or learning digital technology or of giving more space to prayer or finding different and new ways of being church and that these will in due course bear much fruit in the coming months and years. This has been a year of sowing into the ground and part of that is burying some aspects of church life which were not healthy or fruitful or working well and so need to die and be buried forever so that the new ways of worshipping, living and following God and his mission scattered just as much as gathered as church may spring up and grow and flourish so much fruitfulness for his glory. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, you sowed your life into this world by becoming human. In your living a complete and perfect human life and in giving your life to a cross and to burial into the ground. May we follow your example and also sow our lives into this world for the sake of others and for your gospel. May we bury those things which are dead and fruitless in us and in our churches. And as you were raised out of the ground to glorious new life, may we grow afresh in new fruitfulness and power. May your kingdom come in and through us to the glory of your name. Amen. Thank you.